Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and I'd like to welcome you back to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. We start off in South Florida, where Anthony Alfredo piloted his number 21 Richard Childress Racing, iRacing.com Chevy Camaro at Homestead Miami Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series doubleheader. Let's hear directly from Anthony after his career best finish of fourth. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here checking in post-race here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Very solid day for our iRacing Chevrolet Camaro. Uh, Richard Childress Racing guy stayed on top of it and uh, I think I got us you know, a little bit behind, needed a little bit more of an adjustment earlier for that long run. Uh, but once we got up on the fence, it, it was so much fun. I've never done that before. It's my first time racing at Homestead and running it right against the wall is not only fun, but it's cool to make speed out of it and I think we got it even better there for that green white checkered finish where we restarted seventh. We we raced really hard for the wave around and we got it. Uh, so we were able to, to pit, restart seventh, last car on the lead lap and a uh, high sided uh, couple guys went three wide on the top and brought it home fourth, almost had third too. So I'm really pumped about that. Like I said, a very solid day. I learned a bunch and uh, the best part is we get to do it again tomorrow. So get to translate everything we learned uh, but I'm just really, really, really excited now uh, because I have a better place to start with everything I learned. I feel like um, everything that, that took me maybe the first stage to figure out, I have learned now, including how to run the wall and um, what our car is balanced like early in a run. And obviously at the end, uh, it drove really well in the short run and uh, I took advantage of that green-white checker to get us an even better, better finish than if it were to go green to the end. So uh, looking forward to uh, going at it again and trying to, have an even better day. We're only a couple spots short of uh, the win, so we'll see what we can do to capitalize on tomorrow. But nonetheless, very thankful to be here. Very thankful for iRacing support, Chevy, Richard Childress Racing, and everyone on this 21 team, everyone back at the shop. And uh, I know mom and dad wish they were here, so did the rest of my family. My 90-year-old grandpa would actually be here if fans were allowed, because he doesn't live too far away. So uh, shout out to all of them. Uh, I hope I made everyone proud today, and I'm looking forward to trying to do it again tomorrow even better. He would then come back on Sunday and drive his way to a solid 11th place finish to round out the weekend. Up next for Anthony, his debut at Talladega Super Speedway this Saturday. We now head out west to Irwindale Speedway where we find the Nate Clower Motorsports stable of Jesse Love, Joey East, and Cassidy Hines who competed in two feature events in pro late model competition. Jesse picked up a sixth place finish in the first main event, and in the second event, he started sixth with the invert and was quickly moving towards the front when passing for third when he unfortunately got caught up in a racing incident that ended his run early. Jesse then headed to Marysville Speedway in his number 44 Cox Racing Sprint Car, where he qualified 19th, finished fourth in his heat race. That transferred him directly to the A main where he started 17th and brought home a 12th place finish. Up next for Jesse, a little fun, running a spec Miata at Utah Motorsports Campus this weekend, all in preparation for the Arca Menards West Series race there on June 27th. I'm sure they'll throw in a couple of sprint car races in between. Let's go back to Irwindale Speedway where we find Joey East, who qualified his Ag Center number 88 in eighth place and brought home a fifth place finish in race one and a fourth place in race two. On the way back to Madera, the Nate Clower team made a stop at Kern County Raceway for some practice lap in preparation for an upcoming race. Cassidy Hines was also at Irwindale with only one mission, seat time. Turned some laps against some experienced drivers. So in race number one, she finished 17th, not the finish she was hoping for, and then brought home a 15th place finish in race number two after being taken out by an unpatient competitor that not only damaged her car, but two others. Let's hear a short post-race message from Cassidy. Hi everyone, I raced at Irwindale Speedway this weekend in my pro late model for Nate Clower Motorsports. I didn't quite get the outcome I was looking for. I was tangled up in a wreck with three laps to go. I did, however, learn a lot from the track and from the experienced driver that I was racing with. So I think it, all in all, it went really well. I will be racing my pro truck at Colorado National Speedway this weekend, June 20th. That was pretty calm considering what happened to her. 
Jake Bowman was also at Irwindale Speedway running in his legend car on the one-third mile racetrack. In the first main event, he battled hard and came home with a seventh place finish. In the second event, Jake was leading with 15 laps to go before getting loose and losing two positions, but he was still able to make the podium with a third place finish. Jake leads the INEX National Points and the Young Lions for both the asphalt and road course divisions. Connor Mozak was at Hickory Motor Speedway for the Cars Tour Race Face Telmed 300, driving the number eight Nick Taylor Interstate Foam and Supply Chevrolet for Junior Motorsports. Connor fought a loose condition in both Friday's practice and in Saturday's qualifying, resulting in a 20th place starting position. At the drop of the green flag, he battled side by side before the field thinned out, allowing him to start his march towards the front. A late caution with 20 laps to go and a race strategy of saving his tires allowed him to race his way to a 10th place finish. Katie Hedinger made her return to the CRA Junior Late Model Series at Anderson Speedway. She set her number 71 Victory Custom Trailer Chevrolet on the pole with a new track record. With the inverse, she started fifth and raced her way to a podium finish in third place, all with a broken toe that required some slight adjustments inside the car. Joe Valento was at Hawkeye Down Speedway in Cedar Falls, Iowa for round two of the Midwest Pro Truck Series. Joe put his number 30 Arden Mills Nitro Lubricant Chevrolet on the pole, but had to start 11th due to winning the previous race. Joe was hammered down from the green flag and worked his way into the lead by lap 25 and stayed there, parking his Kelly Byers Performance Chevrolet in victory lane for the second straight time. Joe leads the points heading into round three at Marshfield Speedway on July 11th. All right, Joe, picking up the Midwest Trucks win at Hawkeye Downs. The trucks have not been here since 2017, so congratulations first off. For the Hawkeye Downs fans, uh, anybody that follows us, how old are you? Uh, I'm 15 years old. 15 years old, and how many truck wins do you have this year? Uh, this is my second one. We got it at Golden Sands a couple weeks ago. My uh, actually first win in the Midwest Truck Series, so excited to keep the streak going. What are your plans for the rest of the year? Uh, continue with the truck series, finish out the season, and hopefully win the championship. And then we're also going to run some selected pro late model races around the country, North Carolina and California. Colby and Justice Sokol ran a full week of racing as part of the Sooner 600 Speed Wakes in the 600 Micro Sprints. Throughout the week, Colby ran an A-class and a non-wing. His accomplishments included two top five finishes, a B-main victory, and an 11th place finish, and fourth overall in Speed Week points. Let's hear what Colby had to say about his week. Hey guys, uh, we're just driving home after, after going to Sooner 600 Speed Week, so this is our second time there. We had a lot of fun this year. I ran stock non-wing and wing day class. My highest, my highest finishing position was a third place finish, and then I got a fifth place and then made some mistakes that I learned not to do next time. We had to replace the front axle, but overall it's a, it was a really fun trip going out there and I can't wait to go out there next year. Justice ran in the restricted class throughout the week and he was able to get three podium finishes, two top five finishes, and finish third overall in Speed Week points. Now let's hear from Justice about his week. Hey guys. I had an awesome Sooner 600 Speed Weeks. It was a great learning experience. I definitely learned a lot, gained a lot more experience from last year's Speed Weeks to this year's Speed Weeks. And I was really excited with my finishes because five out of, four out of five nights I got a top five finish and then uh, one um, two nights ago at Port City I had to run a B feature but I transferred out of that. So a lot of passing that that was made and um, broke my fear of running the top and I finally started running it. That's it for this week's Action Pack Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Race Face Spotlight on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And as always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers 
So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.